Since we already hit peak performance in PvP last month, we were having a tough time figuring out what to make next. So we sent Joe Fernandez crawling through the archives where he came back with an absolute artifact. It was our solo shuffle targeting guide for the start of season one, which was in desperate need of an update. We listened to your feedback and decided that some things definitely needed to change. So we redesigned our targeting guide to be reflective of the upcoming meta and be more relevant to the entire ladder. Just like before, we will be breaking everything down at two levels. The first level will be a basic targeting tier list where we will be ranking each spec based on whether they are good to attack for the average lot. At level 2, we will take this a step further and apply the targeting tier list to actual solo shuffle rounds so you know who is best to attack when up against 3 enemy players. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcap if you truly want to climb rating in WoW Arena. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. We do this because our service is proven to work and if it doesn't, you don't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. Anyway, let's get started. We will start at level 1. Here we will be ranking each melee, ranged, and healer based on whether they are good or bad targets for the average lobby. When deciding who to select as your initial target, you have to think about multiple things. For one, how much passive damage it will take. Second, how efficient its defensive cooldowns are at countering your lobby's damage. Next, how much mobility the spec has. And finally, how important it is to shut the spec down with interrupts or CC. First up, we have our tankiest melee, with Arms Warrior taking the lead after some class tuning throughout Season 1. This includes the re-edition of Ignore Pain, which when combined with Impending Victory, means that warriors are actually capable of a lot of active self-healing, all while being passively durable with the combination of high armor and defensive stance. In addition to this, Arms Warrior has some more subtle defensive perks, including automatic self-healing through deep wounds and a talent called Pain and Gain, which together can add up to a decent amount of self-healing over the course of a longer game. Fury Warrior also narrowly falls into the tanky category. The spec shares many defensive properties with arms, though with slightly more reliance on uptime to maximize self-healing. In general, warriors are going to be relatively tankier compared to other DPS. On the other end of the spectrum, we have every spec of Rogue. Asa is the squishiest of them all, but the class in general takes large amount of damage, especially into other melee. While subtlety rogues can kite away and reset the fight, Asa and Outlaw need to stay constantly pushed in to maximize pressure, which means they are almost always an accessible target. Of course, rogues might have some of the best active defensives in the game with Vanish, Evasion, and Cloak of Shadows, but outside of these abilities, rogues definitely take a lot of damage, especially in stuns, where their only true line of defense is a clunky cheat death. We've also made a similar adjustment to DKs, who were also previously on the tanky side of things. While they might still hold that title against caster damage, DKs are on the squishier end when up against physical DPS, which are way more common in the meta. Death Knights got a few key defensive nerfs at the start of the expansion, specifically to Will of the Necropolis and Rune of Spell Warding, which previously meant they were one of the tankiest melee. While DKs might be durable into casters, it's important to remember that many of their defensives get nerfed at higher levels of dampening, which makes them even better targets later on into the game. For similar reasons, we are keeping enhancement on the squishy tier, since the majority of its tankiness is intrinsically tied to self-healing, which unfortunately was actually nerfed in the 07 patch, now that Refreshing Waters and Focus Insight share a slot on the talent tree. As a result, Enhancement took a hit to its defensive kit, which was already fairly weak compared to other melee DPS. With that said, the redesign of its damage profile might have made Enhance slightly more threatening, but we still think it is a great target to attack since it is still very vulnerable in stuns where its self-healing is practically useless. In the middle of both extremes, we have Rhett Paladin, who went on a wild ride of class tuning in recent weeks. Paladin saw a massive redesign in the 07 patch, including the ability to use Divine Protection when stunned. When this was combined with a buff to Avenging Wrath and a newly introduced magic bop, Rets were quite tanky for a few weeks. Luckily for everyone else, the developers have dialed back many of their buffs, which should now make them more neutral targets in Arena. This should put them in line with other melee, including Feral Druids, which we are categorizing as a neutral target that can be good to attack, but not actually train, especially as a caster. Because Feral Druids typically weave in and out of the fight and can do a lot of rot pressure even while running away. This means that when they are pushed in, they make excellent targets to tab to, but otherwise they are so good at avoiding damage that you can easily overextend trying to constantly chase them down. Surprisingly, we've also moved Demon Hunter to the neutral category, since it is also an easily accessible target most of the time and takes a lot of damage in melee heavy lobbies. Previously, we had DH on the tanky end of the spectrum, but after multiple defensive nerfs in the start of the season, that is no longer the case. 
While DH might have an efficient melee defensive in the form of Blur, it struggles hard into the meta with the abundance of Ret Paladins and Arms Warriors who have no problem blasting Demon Hunters all game. The same is true for Survival Hunters, who certainly take a lot of damage when pinned down by melee, but have enough avoidance tools to make them difficult to actually train. Between Master's Call, Disengage, and Two Root Effects, Survival is mobile enough to avoid a lot of damage, which makes it hard to brute force a kill when all of this is available. But if the Hunter is playing Reckless and is constantly pushed in, they are good targets to attack. The next neutral melee we will cover is Windwalker Monk, who in many ways is just a tankier version of Outlaw Rogue. While Windwalkers might take a lot of passive damage, this is offset by the fact that they have multiple highly efficient cooldowns, which can be difficult to rotate through one by one. On top of this, the ability to port away makes it more difficult to train monks from start to finish. So just like other neutral targets, they can be good to attack, but we wouldn't recommend training them all game unless there's no better option. And with that, we have our rankings of each melee based on how tanky they are in solo shuffle. Rogues in general are on the squishier side, but subtlety is slightly more durable due to having double vanish and a more hit and run based playstyle. There are a few specs that are a bit tankier into casters, like DKs obviously, but also survival hunters since they can passively avoid more damage with line of sight and can strip off dots using feign death. Finally, some specs are squishier at lower ratings due to their steeper learning curves. This includes both Windwalker Monks and Feral Druids, who have quite a bit of defensives but take a lot of passive damage. Now though, let's move on to our tankiest ranged DPS, which only includes Demonology Warlock. Demo has emerged again as the premier Warlock spec after a series of buffs in the 07 patch. Its tankiness is due to several factors, one of which being Soul Link, where it is the only Warlock spec that consistently plays with a pet and therefore receives the benefit of 10% reduced damage. Beyond this, Demo has some of the best control of any caster, with multiple ways to peel enemy players, all while being less reliant on hard casting compared to other wizards. Even if you sit on a Demo Warlock all game, they will still be able to put out damage, which makes them generally less appealing as an initial target. This is definitely not the case for Affliction and Destro Warlock, who are good to train specifically for melee DPS. Unlike Demo, who has the benefit of Soul Link and lots of pet damage, Destro and Affliction typically sacrifice their pet, meaning they take more damage. On top of this, attacking Warlocks can shut down some of their damage. Destro is still able to put out a lot of pressure through instant casts, but tunneling these specs will deny some of their damage and control. The same is true for Devastation Evoker, which is arguably the squishiest spec in all of WoW PvP. Not only does Evoker have limited passive tankiness, but its primary defensive cooldown can actually be dispelled, which is quite brutal in a burst-heavy meta. It would seem like Evokers would be able to make up for this with mobility, but the relatively long cooldown on Hover makes it less effective into the highly mobile melee DPS. Next up in the good to train category is Mark's Hunter, which is entirely due to the way they deal damage. Unlike BM and Survival, who can do most of their DPS while moving, Mark still has to hard cast aimed shots to put out pressure. More often than not, this makes them better targets to attack since they are slightly less mobile than their other specs. As our final good targets to train, we have both Shadow Priests and Balanced Druids. Both of these specs take lots of damage, especially against melee, and have some of the weakest overall mobility. Yes, we just said Boomkins have bad mobility. Even though they can shapeshift, Boomies are still prone to getting gunned down by melee, which is also the case for Shadow Priest. While Balanced Druids aren't super reliant on hard casting damage, they still need to maximize Cyclone usage to be most effective in Solo Shuffle. Attacking them does proc fast cast clones, but after its nerfs earlier this expansion, these are much easier to kick, as long as you also play around precognition. Somewhere between these two extremes, we have Mages, which we've moved into the neutral category. Here we have a disclaimer, there is a massive variation when it comes to mage skill, which makes them better targets at lower MMR. The main difference between mages and warlocks is intrinsically tied to mobility, where mages are technically better at avoiding melee damage when played well. With that said, the class in general takes heavy damage and is extremely vulnerable to spam dispels, which can strip away shields and counter alter time. Frost is technically the tankiest out of the three, due to having two uses of ice block and better tools for avoiding melee DPS. For all these reasons, choosing mage as a primary target really depends on their skill level and whether you have the right tools to shut down their defensive kit. For similar reasons, we've also placed BM Hunter in the neutral category. As we already mentioned, Hunters as a whole take a lot of damage when pinned down and have relatively weaker defensive cooldowns compared to other DPS. With that said, one thing worth looking out for is survival tactics, which causes feign death to remove all magic debuffs. So if your lobby has a lot of dot based magic damage, Hunters might not be worth the investment. Just like mages, their tankiness truly comes from their ability to be highly evasive, and especially in the case of Beast Mastery, Hunters are able to do the majority of their damage while moving, which can 
and allow them to safely play near pillars. We've also kept Elemental on the neutral tier with an important distinction. Elemental is really squishy into melee, but can be really tanky into other casters. Ellie has a slight advantage over Enhancement for the simple reason that it is a ranged DPS with better zoning options, which makes it passively more difficult to attack. When up against other casters, Ellie has the advantage of being able to deal most of its damage while weaving in and out of line of sight, which can make it difficult to kill unless out in the open. Here we have our full targeting tier list for ranged DPS. In general, casters are pretty squishy, with the exception of Demo Warlock. Affliction Warlocks and Devastation Evokers are universally the best targets since they take an extraordinary amount of damage and are reliant on healing-based defensives, which as we know get weaker in dampening. There are a select few specs that are moderately tankier into casters, including Warlocks, Ellie Shamans, and sometimes Hunters, which all take considerably more damage from melee. Moving on to healers, we have to change our ranking slightly. That's because there are very limited cases where it is a good idea to train a healer from start to finish. We don't really recommend choosing healers as an initial target unless you're playing in a melee heavy lobby, since there are more opportunities to cleave without worrying about peels or spam CC. With that in mind, instead of good to train, we have can be trained, which includes resto shamans, who can potentially be trained by melee DPS, assuming there isn't a better target in the lobby. Despite some major buffs in the patch, shamans are still quite vulnerable to getting attacked due to their limited mobility and relatively weaker personal defensive cooldowns. With that said, shamans are rarely a good target for casters since they have lots of anti-magic tools and can be difficult to kill outside of stuns. The same is true for Mistweaver Monk, which applies to both standard and fist weaving builds. Both can pump out an insane amount of healing but take loads of damage during stuns, even when teleporting is an option. This means in order to actually train down a Mistweaver Monk, you need to play around their mobility because if they get caught multiple times, they can take loads of damage. Fist Weavers in particular can be good targets for melee, assuming you can avoid their attacks with tools like Evasion, Die by the Sword, or Blur. If they can't hit you, they don't do much healing. The only healer that is a universally good target regardless of role is Holy Paladin, under the assumption that you can cleave, or if there is no other target worth attacking. Superficially, it might seem that Holy Paladins might be difficult to kill due to bubble, but it's important to remember that Paladin healing is tied to one spell school, and is slightly reliant on hardcasted spells, which means every interrupt has high value. This means if you are able to threaten them with stuns and kicks repeatedly, they can actually be a good target to attack. The rest of the healing lineup falls into categories of can be swapped to. This first includes preservation of ochres. Nullifying shroud can make evokers really difficult initial kill targets, but if that can be taken care of, they will almost always be worth attacking at some point since they are constantly pushed into the fight. Priests can also be good swap targets depending on the matchup. You might be wondering why they are not good to train, and that's because they have some of the best defensive cooldowns out of any healer. So trying to brute force your way through double pain suppression, dome, rapture, desperate prayer, and life swap can be a losing battle. Finally, we have Resto Druids, who can be the most difficult targets to actually connect to if they are playing incredibly passive. The combination of their mobility, bear form, and tranquility bubble means they are quite hard to kill outside of stuns. With that said, they can flop once Trinket is down, but we wouldn't recommend choosing a Resto Druid ever as a starting target, especially since they will be invisible. And with that, we have our full rankings for healers as initial targets in Solo Shuffle. Again, we will emphasize that healers aren't usually the best targets to call out and are typically only trained in melee heavy lobbies. Training a healer is inherently risky otherwise, since it usually means sacrificing positioning and leaving your entire team open to casted CC and damage. With all of our tier lists accounted for, let's wrap things up with some targeting rules. Just like before, we have three of them. Rule number one is against double melee or double caster, you can safely follow the tier list to figure out who to attack. So if you're up against a demo warlock and a balanced druid, you can safely hit the druid no matter what. Rule number two, against melee caster lobbies, it's usually safer to attack the caster unless it is a squishy melee. So unless the lobby has one of these specs, then you're pretty safe to tunnel the caster. If there is both a squishy melee and squishy caster on the same team, the caster is usually a better option. Finally, rule three, avoid tunneling healers if you don't have a stun and they have a caster on their team. Again, training healers works best in melee heavy lobbies since it gives you the ability to cleave, otherwise you might be opening yourself up to a massive lose condition if you allow a caster to freely pressure and peel your entire team. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, we wanted to tell you a little bit more about Skillcapped. We are the only website that promises you will gain at least 400 rating while using our guides. Instead of needing to waste all that time painfully figuring out PvP on your own, Skillcapped has streamlined the entire process and is guaranteed to deliver results. Our website features epic class courses that teach you the exact fundamentals needed to climb in WoW Arena. And in the time it takes to get a solo shuffle pop, you can learn advanced skills in our Mastered Minutes guides. 
We also have hundreds of solo shuffle commentaries where expert players teach you the secret strategies in order to beat the toughest lobbies. So if you want to see real rating gains and achieve your goals this season, check out skillcap.com using the links below. Anyway guys, that wraps up today's update. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.